Hey guys, welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create a dedicated Rust server. Creating a dedicated Rust server is relatively easy compared to other sort of games, so let's get right into it. First of all, go to playrust.com forward slash dedicated dash server and download rust underscore server dot zip. This is a relatively small file. Go get that file, copy it and put it wherever you want your server located. In my instance, I'm going to put it on my desktop. Go ahead and extract it. And you can delete that zip now. And go ahead and open the server folder. Now you want to edit this Windows batch file. So right click on run underscore DS and select edit. This will open up the batch file or the text file and this is where the launch parameters are for your server so for example you can set your host name this is the name of the server that will be in the server list in game so I'm going to set this as test rust server you'll probably want to set this as something else <laughs> uh, you can go ahead and change the port if you want to in my case I'm going to leave that as the default port of 28015 also a reminder when you port forward your ports for this server you're going to port want to port forward 28015 28016 and 28017 server identity is the name of the server in the folder which it's going to generate so in my case I'm going to name it server 1 this is great if you host multiple servers server seed is for uh, the map seed you can look up online for some good seeds or you can just you know put a random number in there log file is what the it outputs to so the log file will output to output dot text and auto update this is if you want your server to auto update on launch now you might not want this here if you're running an oxide server uh, because uh, some mods and oxide can be broken with updates now there's a few things we're going to want to put in here one of them is uh, you're going to want to put plus and then server dot world size and then this number can be anywhere between 1000 and 8000 uh, the larger the world the more resources the server will consume when it's hosting it so I'm going to host this server at a relatively uh, moderate size world so it's going to be 3000 so once again it can be between 1000 and 8000. 1000 being the smallest world you can generate and 8000 being the largest world you can generate. Next we're going to want to set a player limit by default it goes to 500 but uh, I don't really want that many people being able to connect to one server because I probably don't have the internet connection for it so I'm going to go plus server dot max players and then I'm going to make the limit 100 players go ahead and save that file close it and then double click on it to launch it this will download all of the rust files to your computer this can take a while to download so you know go get something to eat whilst it's doing so <laughs> Once the server files have successfully downloaded and the server has started, uh, you're going to want to head and add yourself as the owner to the server. To do so, uh, we need your Steam64 ID, so go ahead to a site such as steamid.io and type your Steam username, mine is cas 397 This will display a page with a bunch of data on it. What you're interested in is the Steam ID 64 which starts with 7656, so once you've got that number, type in owner ID and then a space and then you have to right click Ooh. space then right click and paste and then the player name so in my case it's owner ID space and then that number and then another space and CASA 397 this will add you as an owner to the server if you want to add like a friend as a moderator or something or you have staff for your server go ahead and type moderator ID and then the same process so a space and then that number and then uh, their name obviously their steam ID will be different so now that we've added ourselves as an owner let's hop in game and see how the server is operating so now that we're in game there are several ways you can connect to your server you can open the console 
and type in client.connect and then uh, localhost and then the port or you can go client.connect and then type in the IP of the server followed by the port or you can go ahead and go to the server browser like I'm about to do and show you that the server appears in the server list so because there's no mods it'll appear in the community server and because it's a local host it's got a really low ping and it'll be should be at the top so that's the server so let's hop inside this server and we'll see how it goes so now that we're in the server, go ahead and uh, check if you have owner privileges. So to do so, you can just go press F1 and spawn in, an, spawn in an item or something. If it gives you the item, it's highly likely that you're owner. Cool, so what you can do now, this is entirely optional, but you can go ahead and set some binds as the server owner. So for example, you might want to set uh, no clip. So to do so, go open up the server console by pressing F1 and go bind I no clip oh. and this will bind no clip to the letter to the i key you can set that key to whatever you want so now when i press i i now have no clip cool something else you might want to do is uh the debug camera so to do so similar thing similar thing bind and then o debug camera this will set o so now i'm pressing o to the debug camera and another bind is entity kills. So to do so, press F1, type in bind, and we'll set that to P, and then ent, short for entity, kill. So this basically means if you're looking at a animal or at a, basically an entity, uh, so like a wall, animal, etc., you can just press P and it will delete it from the server. Let's see if I can see an animal. I hear an animal. And there you go, <laughs> dear problem gone. Thank you for watching this video on how to set up a Rust dedicated server. There'll be another video coming soon on how to set up a Rust dedicated server with Oxide as well as mod tutorials. So stay tuned for that and thanks for watching the video.